Good morning, folks. We're starting today with the filament eruption that we began watching yesterday morning. It indeed lifted and released into space, producing a good-sized CME that is tracking behind Earth's orbital trajectory and will miss our planet. There's also an even bigger plasma filament turning out of view on the north, standing tall to give us a good last look before he heads for eruptive phase on the far side. We've got intense solar wind at Earth. A very rare quake strikes the primary alert zone most recently posted. We'll see hail, volcano alerts, and an interesting new paper about the sun. But we begin over at spaceweathernews.com. The last 24 hours of our star were calm except for that filament release on the left. Big coronal hole, dead center, and now beginning to turn away. Solar flaring is mad. We started rumors about her, and now she's giving us the silent treatment. Sunspots never produced anything major while on their run, and they're on their way out. Solar wind is another story as the intense stream from that coronal hole has arrived at Earth. You can see in purple the speed shot up as the stream began arriving. But folks, it has yet to produce any geomagnetic storm conditions, just instability. Now, we absolutely could still see storms as the speed ramps up, and it might not be finished. But the lack of immediate storms is what I've been waiting for. A major earthquake forecasting breakthrough is normally the geomagnetic activity quashes the earthquakes, but you might recall we were specifically looking for it at this time. Now, the USGS has this event at magnitude 5.9. If they don't upgrade it, it will not be an official hit. But folks, in the essence of truth, you can put it in the back of your mind as a six-pointer. Pretty much everyone else on Earth has that between 6.0 and 6.3, and it's not exactly the ring of fire, is it? Well, back on December 5th, we posted this map, the orange arrow and description above our key. We were looking for the solar wind stream to intensify the pressure gradients over the eastern world, and if the stream struck Earth with them in daylight hours, that would be an earthquake watch. Here's the map we posted at the onset of the streams when it looked like the density wave was rising. Note the slight eastward shift of the arrow, and notice how the world alerts go orange to show the decreased chances for big quakes due to geomagnetic activity, but two remain red. The two I thought had a chance to intensify when the stream hit, but obviously it could only be one, the one with the magnetospheric compression on the day side driving it, whichever was facing the sun when it struck. The stream arrived a few hours later, right around noon in this region actually. The pressure intensified, the current shot right down the convergence area and aimed west of India. Earthquake at the white X, and folks, even if they never upgrade to 6.0 and it doesn't reach the threshold for an official hit for my personal numbers, I hope you can all see what just happened here. Moving on, we've got an incredible combination of Hinode and sunrise images investigating the coupling and magnetic interactions at the lowest part of the solar atmosphere. Excellent read if you're a geek like me. And coming to the alert map, we saw crazy hail take out tons of agricultural operations in Zimbabwe. We also have two volcanoes going on alert, both in South America, one in Ecuador and one well south of there in Chile. Both mountains were put on alert due to increased seismic activity beneath them. Website members, we've got a new Deeper Look episode out for you yesterday. Only about half of you watched the first one from this month, so check that out as well. Actually applies to sun diving comets and earthquakes. Right now, we've got your pressure and radar forecast, followed by shots of our star to close. It's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.